Welcome back, everybody, to Stochastic Agency. My name is Brian. It's August 21st, and we're here again on another Sunday where we are going to share an intriguing detail or details from a setting. The setting I've chosen is from the Mutineer Zero engine or game uh, or family of games that you can pick up from Free League. Now, these details have to do as much with the setting itself as it does with how the game is played, the creation of characters, and how things evolve while you're playing. There's this group of questions that you answer at the beginning when you're creating characters, very similar to a Powered by the Apocalypse game. What are your ties with the world? What are your ties to the other player characters? Who are your enemies and allies, your best buddy, what's your dark secret, these kind of things really dealing with the character. As far as the setting goes, there is, of course, as seen in many of the Free League games, a very heavy focus on survival. And Mutant Year Zero is definitely a game of survival. Do not let it fool you. The arc is pretty much the home base that the characters will operate from. It's similar to, but not as exact in model as the Stronghold system from Forbidden Lands. In the arc, it does evolve over play. Very similar to what happens in Forbidden Lands. At the beginning of the game, we go through a phase in Mutant Year Zero where we talk about what's going on in the arc, and then we go on from there. Now, the arc acting as its base, your base of operations. You may think, oh, well, we can go out and roam around anywhere where we want to in the zone. But that is where you would probably make a lot of mistakes. Being able to get things back to the Ark, you are tied there. You are responsible in many ways for the success or failure of the Ark. And if you wind up Losing the Ark, very good chance that you are going to have to go out into the zone and really, really deal with the concept of surviving in this game. So it behooves you to take care of it as a player and as the character. This is everything from developing the educational capabilities of the inhabitants of the Ark to its defenses, its offensives, offensive capabilities, its uh, ability to produce food and potable water, its ability to house and maintain artifacts of the world, to grow a museum or develop educational systems for those inhabitants of the Ark. Abandon it, and you pay the price. Now, the Ark is not just a static thing. It grows on its own in some aspects during that beginning phase when the players are saying, we're going to start this project, we're going to start this project, and it will come to a fruition eventually. Now, the GM has something we call, is called what is called a threat deck. And this threat deck can interact with the characters or it can interact with the arc. Either way, it ties the players and the arc together still. Because if something comes up and it's at the arc, whether that's an external threat or, for Fen, the fact that it could be an internal threat, either to the arc itself or to the player characters, there's this cycle of play that you go through. You start play talking about the arc and working to develop it as your base of operations then the arc can become both a source of comfort and a source of threat you're always going out into the zone to bring back artifacts that could be anything from a oscillating fan to a motorcycle, a tank, a giant-sized mine excavator, 
a torpedo, a Sony PlayStation. It could be virtually any piece of technology that could be brought back. Weapons, gear in general, whatever. But all of this can help add to certain values or statistics used for working with the ARC. As you're going through and you're doing all this, this is to me what makes the setting of Mutant Year Zero as far as a post-apocalyptic game goes is this cycle of play that you're in and the details that you have to pay attention to when dealing with the setting itself or whether you're dealing with the rules itself or you're dealing with NPCs and player characters. The way that Free League has tied survivability and the survival, not just of the, the player characters, but the arc as well, together and into the setting is intricate on some levels. It's relatively easy to get your head around and understand when something relates to uh, welfare or uh, warfare or resources uh, and that kind of thing. So in some ways it does tie a little bit or you can see a bit of this from Fallout, right? We've, if, for those of you that may have played Fallout, you know, you're always going out into wherever, uh, in the Fallout universe and bringing things back or you are keeping them for yourselves and you're using what you find to modify gear or things in the world around you. It, it really does take a game about survival and add in this element of resource management into it. For me, without going into the meta plot, which kind of destroys a lot or could potentially destroy a lot of what makes Mutant Year Zero Mutant Year Zero, uh, you don't necessarily have to play into the meta plot as far as all four books go. But without spoiling a lot, I, I think this is one of the most interesting details about the setting is just this intricate weave it has between resource management, survival, the setting concept itself, uh, and this idea of a base of operations. It all together really drives the idea that if there's no one else that's gonna work together, the player characters, really need to work together. Because if you don't, if you think you can go out into the zone and survive without the arc, or if over the course of long-term play, you wind up losing the arc because people die and you're not always getting followers back to the arc and replenishing those that have passed away, it's tough. So, Mutant Year Zero, if you haven't had a check, had a chance to check it out in any of its versions, or I guess I should say, any of its core rule books that span across its entire setting, Mutant Year Zero or Mutant, and that game actually, and it's this setting actually goes all the way back to 1984. So yes, this game is a lot older than you think. Uh, then we've also got Gen Lab Alpha, which in the past has been hard to get a hold of, but in the past recent months, my understanding is that it should be currently available. Mechatron and Elysium. So mutant, you're playing humans, which have mutated. Gen Lab Alpha, you're playing animals, which have been mutated. Mechatron, you're playing AI sentient robots who are searching for individuality, possibly. And Elysium, well, you're just playing a vault dweller. No mutations. You don't even really know what the world looks like out there. So Get out there, if you can, dive into Mutant Year Zero, or if you just want to check out the Mutant Year Zero engine, try it for free. As always, try and get somebody out there playing. Be cool to each other, and have some fun.